Hello everyone. Now, yesterday we have discussed about optical isomerism. In optical isomerism, we have seen the diagram which I have drawn. That is, the whole arrangement is there in a polarimeter. Polarimeter tells us whether the substance is able to rotate the plane polarized light or not. If it rotates the plane polarized light towards right, then it is dextrorotatory. Towards left, then it will be levirotatory. Fine. Now we can summarize all the things. Compounds or ions which can rotate the plane polarized light are called optically active substances. Fine. Now what has been found? Those compounds which are unsymmetrical compounds. I'll tell you later what's the meaning of unsymmetrical. Unsymmetrical compounds can rotate the plane of polarized light and they will be optically active. Now see, unsymmetrical substances are those which do not have a plane of symmetry in them. That means they do not have one plane at the center which can divide them into equal halves. For example, let's take some general examples. We have letter P. Letter P do not have any plane. It's not a symmetrical letter. It do not have any plane through which if it is divided, it divides into two equal parts. No, it's not, uns it's not symmetrical. Q is not symmetrical, R is not symmetrical. But see the letter A. Letter A is a symmetrical letter. Here, if we have this plane, then this plane divides letter A into equal halves. Fine. So, similarly, letter M is there, letter W is there. All these have center of symmetry. Fine. If such, if these are letter, but if such compounds are there, they have plane of symmetry, then they cannot rotate plane polarized light. Why? Because when light passes through one half, there will be rotation, definitely. Suppose it will be rotated by 2 degree left. But when the plane polarized light same pass through the other half, it rotates 2 degree right. So the net rotation will be 0. But in such cases, there will be some net rotation. Now, how to find uh, by the structure of the compound whether it is having a plane of symmetry or not? It's another a simple way is there. You just try to imagine the mirror image of that particular compound. For example, letter P, this will be its mirror image. Fine. Letter Q, letter Q, this will be its mirror image. Letter R, this is the mirror image. Fine. Now it is very simple. If you just put this mirror image on the object, then they will not exactly superimpose each other. Fine. For example, if we have the superimposition means, for example, you have here letter A. This is its mirror image. You just imaginarily put this image on the object, they completely superimpose on each other. Fine. Right? But letter P will not superimpose on each other. Q, this image will not superimpose. This will not superimpose. Fine. Right? So these are we say the substances which are unsymmetrical are those whose mirror images do not superimpose each other. Fine. Now, see, if suppose this P is a compound, if this is a compound, then these two mirror images of the compound are called anisomers. We say anisomers are optical isomers. Anisomers are having different rotation for the plane polarized light. Suppose this isomer is dextro. Suppose plus rotates the plane polarized light towards right by 2 degree. Then this isomer will definitely be leave you and it will rotate the plane polarized light towards left, 2 degree left. Fine. So this is how anisomers have the relation between them. Now these two anisomer, now this is not an imaginary compound. This, these two compound, this dextro and this lepio, these two are separately available in the market, right? So these two are the separate independent compound, but they have a relation between them that they rotate the plane polarized light by same angle, but in the opposite direction, fine? So let's continue. Now let's apply this optical isomerism on coordination compounds. And uh, let's see what type of coordination compounds are optically active. Now, I'll take the first example. 
First example is of the compound, one octahedral compound is there, that is M A2 B4 type. Let's take one example of complex of iron. Two CN4 one negative. Fine. It is a complex of pericon. Fine. Now Let's draw its both cis and trans isomers and let's observe whether they are uh, optically active or not. So, <coughs> this is one, I'll draw cis isomer, will be, I have already told you how to draw any two which are same, put them on one, two position and this will be the cis isomer, fine. Now, you take you want to find whether this isomer is optically active, you have, you just draw its mirror image. You will find here the mirror image and then you can try superimposition of the mirror image. Let's see, its mirror image will be like this. Like this. Now if you see, if you just pick up this image and put it over here, then you see this ammonia will be on CN, right, like that, and this CN will be on ammonia, that means the complete structure will not superimpose each other. So this is, these two are non-superimposable mirror images. So, I can say cis isomer of this particular compound is optically active, fine. Now, let's see for the trans isomer now. The trans isomer for the same compound I draw and let's check its superimposability. Now, ammonia on one four position and cyanide on the other position. This is the trans isomer. Let's draw its mirror image. You'll see very, very simple to draw. The mirror image is, is just like the object. You see here, this mirror image is mirror image exactly superimposed on this compound. That means all the groups, central atom, everything is superimposing. So these are super imposable mirror images, right? So being super imposable, I'll say this trans isomer is symmetrical in nature, cannot rotate plane polarized light, so it is optically inactive. Fine. This is how you can check superimposability of different geometrical isomers of a coordination compound. Fine. So, like that, we can take another example uh, to check the superimposability in which we have uh, bidentic ligands. Let's take one example of the type. M A A twice 